Between all the monsters, demons, abominations, and unending nightmares spewing from the manor, it can be easy to forget that the most dangerous enemies in the estate are simply other humans. Such men are of the truest evil, driven not out of a twisted devotion to a dark god, but for gold and riches. Mercenaries, outlaws, and bandits, or as they're more commonly referred to, the brigands. How they came to this land is the result of their previous employer, our ancestor. While the ancestor was researching the dark arts and excavating the dungeon, many in the hamlet grew concerned over his blasphemous ways. Even his bribes were being refused by the local constabulary, and the tides of rebellion washed over the commoners. Demonstrations and protests were being held, and it wouldn't take long for an angry mob to go marching off to the manor and see him burned at the stake for his various crimes. Realizing he needed to reassert his authority over the town, the ancestor reached out to various mercenary groups, seeking the most tight-lipped and violent of them all. He found the group we know as the Brigands, little more than a collection of thugs and murderers for hire, led by the monster known as Brigand Wolf. <laughs> they arrived in the hamlet, and brought with them an instrument of war never before seen, the Pounder, a fierce and fiery cannon that can destroy anything caught in its line of sight. With the directive of returning order, the brigands marched their cannons into the hamlet and massacred the population, destroying buildings, ruining lives, and turning the town into the desolated land we encountered when we first arrived. After their successful mission, the brigands chose to remain in the wields, setting up a camp to secure their foothold in the region. They would remain on hand as the ancestor's enforcers, as long as he had the money to pay their fee. But following the death of the Ancestor, the brigands' source of income was lost. They chose to stay in the land, however, either to pick over the bones of the estate, or in revenge of losing their revenue. Since then, the old road has been rampant, with brigands attacking caravans and travelers to the estate. Their army's strength lies in their numbers, weaponry, and technology. The two most common are the cutthroats and the fusiliers. Cutthroats are skilled with their blades and daggers, delivering critical hits to our party members. Meanwhile, the fusiliers wield a blunderbust to pepper the party with hot lead. These two types always accompany the blood letter, a massive, battle-scarred captain who wields a cat of nine tails. True to his namesake, he focuses on inflicting bleed and stress damage to the group. He also carries a pistol, should he need to slow down his target. The wields might belong to the hag and her coven, but the brigands are still able to hold their own in the region, probably due to their weapon of war, the pounder. This massive cannon the raw, destructive power to destroy buildings and enough protection to outlast any would-be attacker. Facing down such a thing without a plan is a quick way to a bloody death. Fortunately, the Pounder has a critical weakness. It needs the Matchman to light the fuse. Without him, it cannot fire. If the fuse is lit, the best thing to do is to pray for a misfire. But with a good strategy and the right team, the Pounder can be reduced to a pile of metal and wood. If the Pounder wasn't bad enough, there's something even worse lurking in those woods. An elite division of brigands watching their prey patiently like a wolf waiting for when the clouds gather and the time for an incursion into the hamlet. With flames on the horizon and the smell of sulfur in the air, 
the wolves are at the door. After weeks of rebuilding, the brigands will assault the hamlet again in an attempt to destroy any progress the town has made. As we rush through the burning streets of the hamlet, we'll battle raiders and hunters, tougher than their cutthroat and fuso their counterparts, until finally we come face to face with the man himself, Brigand Wolf. Wielding a massive tower shield and a barrel of bombs, he is an intimidating and bloodthirsty foe. Throughout the battle, he will throw his bombs and let loose war cries. Bombs will go off after one turn, which gives the party time to shuffle their ranks to minimize the blast damage. But while dealing with that, Wolf will call in reinforcements from his army, even protecting them so they can chip away at the party's health. Many have fallen to Wolf's rage, but not today. Those who persevere will hold the line and drive these marauders back. While the brigands are a force to be reckoned with, we must remember they are still mortal. They still bleed just like we do, and they can be killed just as easily as our own. I actually wonder if they succumb to the same stress our own heroes do. Imagine being out in those woods for months or even years. All for what? Revenge on a dead man's family? Money with nowhere in miles to spend it? Whatever their reason, they are an obstacle in our own pursuits. And obstacles are best removed with a firm hand and unwavering resolve. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. The brigands are undone. Our family crest is once again a symbol of strength 